Thank you, Senator Menendez. Senator Tillis of North Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you all for uh, being here. Uh, Mr. Benda, you, you mentioned uh, the need for a partnership. Give me just a quick back of the napkin list of uh, people who should be at the table, uh, particularly the ones who should be that aren't right now. Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, I think right now there really is no table, and so it's hard to say who's there or who isn't. Uh, there's not that coordination that we like. I think the appropriations language that's in there, having Treasury uh, look at who could convene the right people makes a lot of sense. I think, yeah, I, if I were just kind of spitballing, obviously banks, credit uh, companies, uh, payment platforms like Senator Menendez put together, consumer advocacy groups, uh, law enforcement, uh, but really the whole of government too. Yes, absolutely. And, and one partner that I'm kind of wondering whether or not they're already taking steps in the wrong direction would be the CFPB. Last year in August, I think it was August last year, uh, Director Chopra uh, mentioned that it may be more difficult to get uh, uh, credit header, uh, <coughs> excuse me, header data. Um, we're going to go from maybe minutes for law enforcement getting it to a subpoena process. Is that is that like a partnership that's actually going to put us further away from a viable solution? That's not the direction we'd like to see them go. <laughs> you are very diplomatic. It would just seem to me when you're taking that, that law enforcement tool off the table, at the end of the day, law enforcement has to be at the table. We have to enable them. And in fact, we need to take a look at increased uh, penalties. Um, uh, I, I, for one, think that that's taken a step in the wrong direction. So I, I understand the motivations on some part. I disagree with most of Mr. Chopra's motivations, to be honest with you. In this case, I, I think it's a cross purposes to the problem we're trying to address today. Um, Ms. Sanchez Adams, I, I really struggle with this because you hear uh, Senator Tester had two hoverboards charged to his account. I had my uh, bank call me up and ask me if I'd uh, charged $100 at a hardware store in Chicago. Uh, I haven't been in Chicago in almost 10 years, uh, certainly not a hardware store. So we said no, and it was covered. <clears throat> uh, that was clear fraud. The banks covered it. I want to come back on a question uh, related to this to you, Mr. Benda. But how do we kind of strike the balance? We, we had a hearing yesterday about social media platforms. And what I was trying, and we had some horrible stories told about ch you know children that had lost their life, suicides, a number of other things. But at the end of the day, there is a, a parental responsibility there. These, these devices that we're giving children, these tablets, phones, that we have to be very careful with uh, how they're used. Similarly, um, I don't believe that you can just hold the payment platforms or the banks uh, or the intermediaries responsible for all fraud. So, And, and I know you said it, it won't work just with... Uh, uh, financial literacy or education. I agree with that. But at, at some point, I mean, do you agree that at some point, if we're striking the right balance, that the consumer has to own some level of responsibility? And I say that with some trepidation because I've heard these stories of mm -hmm. people being scammed into keeping on the line and going to a Walgreens and getting a $500 payment to somebody that they think is an IRS uh, agent. I, I get all that, but at some point, we can't possibly build into the system someone other than that individual who's making that horrible decision. So how do you strike the balance in a partnership to address a problem that I think we all need to address? Yeah, so, you know, the, as I mentioned, the UK example, initially they um, had a industry-led response. It was called the contingent reimbursement model. And there um, they would, again, apportion the responsibility between three parties, the consumer who was victimized, the receiving institution, the consumer's institution. Um, and so the consumer would be on the hook for like the first 10 pounds or so, and it, they would be reimbursed up to a certain amount. So there's different ways that we can do that. If we change the law to allow, again, the receiving institution to bear some responsibility, not just the consumer's institution, then you can build other types of protections, like only allow a certain amount of dollar transactions per day um, because you're going to be bearing that responsibility or verifying that your new customer who's receiving all of these new transactions isn't committing fraud. So there's different things that I think yeah. we can do. Well, the, the, the reason I worry about, you know, we can't let people off the hook, even if it's devastating consequences. The reason I worry about that is that the industry that will serve customers will then have to start thinking about who they serve based on a potential risk. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, We've already credit. said that the vast, majority, the vast majority of the money comes from senior citizens. The vast majority of the fraud are uh, 
individual interactions come from younger people, then I could see a financial institution that says our sweet spot is not them. Right. So that's when I'm talking about a partnership. That, that's what I'm saying. Let's not throw a baby out with a bathwater and unbank. I, there are a number of times we're proposing legislation up here on the surface looks good, but it ultimately underbanks or unbanks people. So we've just got to strike the right balance. Absolutely. I mean, with credit cards, consumers are already responsible for like up to $50 of unauthorized transactions. And you're right that the people who can get credit is limited because of that credit risk. So there's all of those balances can be struck. But if people are more protected, then they're more apt to feel safe and to actually choose to bank. Well, I've, I've gone over my time, but Mr. Chair, just uh, food for thought uh, because of what Mr. Bender said, and I'm sorry I was not able to get to uh, the third witness, but uh, the fact that we need a partnership, but we don't really have a convener now, uh, I, I don't think we've done it in this committee, Mr. Chair, but it may, it may be helpful outside of a formal committee hearing to uh, have a work group and get all the players, and, and, and let's see who's absent, who we think are a necessary part of the team, but maybe to... to host a work group at some point in the future so that we can get out there and in a, in a less formal setting say, how do we initiate this and ultimately get a response from law enforcement and all the other stakeholders? That's something I'd love to participate in. Thank you for that thought, Senator Chellis. Uh, Senator Smith from Minnesota is recognized um, from her office, I believe. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, everybody.